first of all, I want to say what a delight it is to be here this evening with Tom Fleming, who to this audience needs hardly an introduction. His career spans about a half century. He's authored more than 40 books, fiction as well as nonfiction. He is, to me and to many Americans, America's greatest storyteller, particularly of history. He's been enormously successful, the winner of major awards for his books and for his lifetime devotion to American history. I think we could spend the entire evening here, uh, all the time that we have allotted to us, just reviewing the numerous books and articles that Tom has written, works on Franklin, Washington, Jefferson, Truman, FDR, American Wars, the Hamilton Burr duel, the outstanding volume he produced to accompany the major 1997 PBS production, Liberty. Of course, the recent Perils of Peace, which deals with the events after the surrender of the British at Yorktown in 1781. A great personal memoir of your upbringing in Jersey City, which as you know is my hometown as well, so we have that in common. Yes. right? And so much more on the American Revolution, the great leadership of George Washington and his military struggles to achieve American independence. And now the subject of tonight's conversation, the role of women in American history. We see this in the fiction and nonfiction that you've produced over the years, the novels such as Liberty Tavern, which came out in 1977, just to remind you of that. Uh, the difficulties in that book uh, involving women of life during the American Revolution. The Officer's Wives that came out in 1981, about three West Pointers and their wives, to paraphrase about the resignation of these officers' wives to their lot. Officers' wives, that's what we'll be for the rest of our lives. So he's told a, a wonderful story there. The lives of our founding fathers, the intimate lives of our founding fathers. This book, this incredible book that has just, just been published within the last couple of weeks, I yes, guess. Two, two weeks, two weeks ago. ago. Yeah. Uh, the influence of women in the shaping of our history, women who were the mothers, the wives, the daughters, other friends of the founding fathers, Washington, Franklin, Adams, Hamilton, Jefferson, and Madison. Very different women, enormously interesting in themselves, providing the material for the really riveting stories of the founders. As we've mentioned before in our conversations, it's really six books uh, in one. So as a result, I think that now we can conclude with all that you've done in your career, we're at a new level of writing about American history and history in general. We are all the products of our associations. Those individuals who have made our history and consequently have reached a level of interest as historical characters for books must be researched and written about within the context of their lives, their marriages, their liaisons, all of their associations. They do not exist in any kind of a vacuum. You say in your introduction, far from dis diminishing these men and women, an examination of their intimate lives will enlarge them for our time. So let's get to the first question that I have for you this evening. From your perspective, Tom, what led up to the book that has now come out? It, uh, it what got me going was, was this idea that I had written a great many books on the revolution, well over a dozen, and they were, but they mostly were concerned with the men. And yet in my novels, I had always taken a woman's point of view as often as possible. I've always been fascinated by how women react to events and, and to individuals involved in these events. And it suddenly hit me that maybe this could be done because now, I, I couldn't have done this back in 1960 when I first started writing books, uh, but now the more and more of the papers of these women have become published. And, uh, and, and, and the whole feminist, the, the feminist movement has become a part of our lives. So it's, it seemed like a very logical thing to do in many, many ways and a possible thing to do. And, <clears throat> and then, Barbara, I had this marvelous surprise. This book, for me, has been one surprise after another. Uh, and the biggest surprise was the opening. 
I, I, if I may say so, I think it's one of the best openings I've ever had for a history book. Uh, I've discovered by sheer accident, as, as you often do when you're doing research, that George Washington wrote a letter to a woman named Sally Fairfax in uh, 1759. She was the wife of, the na of, of his best, his good friend, anyway, not his best friend, his good friend's neighbor uh, and neighbor, George William Forf Fairfax. This letter suddenly was published in the New York Herald, <laughs> which is, that was at that time, in 1877, when it was published, it was the biggest newspaper in America. And they published, they called it a Washington love letter. And nobody could believe that it was real at first. And then people who knew a little bit about Washington's uh, life and so forth, there had been some very interesting biographies published, they discovered that he'd written the letter four months after he'd become engaged to Martha Custis who was, incidentally, the richest widow in Virginia. Virginia. <laughs> and this caused consternation in 1877. They couldn't believe that George Washington could possibly have thoughts for another woman. And uh, so uh, it, was, it, was, it was like a suspense story as I probed to find out what happened to this letter. And it turned out that the letter never saw the light of day. It was going to be auctioned off, but some mystery man bought it, and it disappeared for 60 years. And then they found it by sheer accident in the files of the Harvard Library. So when I, said, when I saw all this, I said to myself, this is a book I was born to write. I've got to write this book. I've got to explain this. And then I began to realize there would be other things to discover and explain about the other founding fathers. So as a result of all the research that you've done over the years, and all of these things that kept coming at you about the women's papers, which you couldn't have known about in 1960 when your first book came out, it's at this stage of your 50-year career yes, that this yes. is really com coming out. It seemed to be a perfect book to write, uh, considering the fact that I have published a great many novels by now, and I, so I can... I have a, a reputation and a, and a, and a, and a uh, habits of a historian. I, I've got to get the facts. But I do have, uh, in a book like this, an ability to think intuitively at different points. Right, at, at this stage. Well, talking about George Washington, the father of our country, the iconic figure, the Gilbert Stewart image that we're used to. Tom and I both went to grammar school in, in Jersey City, and there's every schoolroom had a copy, a print of George Washington on the wall. This was in every schoolroom in Jersey City. So this is a kind of inspiration. It has been for me, and I'm sure for you. But he turns out to be much more of a human character, don't you think, than, oh, much, much than more so, in your yeah. book. Than, than your, your quote from a letter Washington wrote after his marriage to Martha, uh, to the English merchant Richard Washington, his name was, that Washington is now, I believe, fixed at this seat, Mount Vernon, yes. with an agreeable consort for life and hope to find more happiness in retirement than I ever experienced in a wide and bustling world. Sounds like a pretty happy man well, to me. Well, uh, yes, happy, but, uh, but again, it, 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 an agreeable consort. consort. Uh, yeah. it, it doesn't suggest a grand passion, you know, or, or deep, deep love. Uh, he was, and this is, this is a problem that Washington had for the rest of his life. A lot of people thought that his marriage to Martha was a marriage of convenience. That's what she was the richest widow in Virginia, as I've said, and she was looking for somebody to manage this magnificent estate that she'd inherited from her late husband. And uh, Washington, of course, was a man of affairs. He'd been a colonel in command of the Virginia troops in the French and Indian War. And he was just about perfect in every way. And incidentally, she was pursued by some of the richest men in Virginia before right. she decided to marry Washington. Uh, they were the same age. And, uh, but I, the more you think about it, the more you, you, you watch what happened afterwards, you realize that there was a definite attraction there. Mm -hmm. and, and, and here is, but the, the, the most surprising thing that I found was after more than a decade of very happy married life, uh, George Washington was appointed commander in chief of the American army in 1775. And the first person he wrote a letter to when he got this assignment was to Martha, and the letter began, My Dearest.